I invited five friends over. One too many arrived. A story by user the third person. The house is burning. Only two of us made it out. There were six at the start of the evening. Seven, I suppose. That was the entire problem. I don't know when the seventh arrived. Dina and Angelo showed up first, while I was still putting out snacks. It must not have been there before them. I recall them being the first. It can't hide in nothing. Kay showed up next. I know she was alone, because I've been trying to figure out the right time to ask her out. If she'd brought someone, I definitely would have noticed. When Christoph and Marina got here, Angelo called out, it's about time you two made it. He specified two. I remember that. That's five arrivals, and of course I was there all along. Maybe the door was opened at some other point. It might not matter now that it's all over. I feel like it does, though. I need to understand what happened. I owe it to my friends. We were playing cards when we noticed. It was a six-handed game, and Angelo was dealing piles in front of each player. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh to himself. You've got too many piles, Dina said. Angelo looked at the table in confusion. There were cards in front of each of us. There were seven separate stacks. Weird. I don't know what happened there, he said, gathering up the cards. He dealt them out again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One to each person, but he had not yet put a card in front of himself. With a nervous chuckle, Angelo said, OK, what am I doing wrong? Six of us, yes? We all agreed. There were clearly six. Everyone put your hand on your card, he said. All six cards were covered. Angelo still did not have one. All right, one more try, said Angelo. While you're sorting this out, I'm going to go to the bathroom, said Kay, standing up. She left the room. Angelo dealt the cards. One, two, three, four, and a fifth to himself. Kay, how many people are you? He shouted. Very funny. She called back. We heard the bathroom door close. Just deal six hands, I told Angelo. There are six of us. It'll work out. Everyone will pick one hand up and play it, and no one will be left out. You'd really think so, he said. But why was I getting to seven before? You're bad at math, Dina told him. Better not let you keep the score, Kristoff chimed in. Kay's chair was scooted back up to the table. Angelo dealt the cards. There were six hands this time. Everyone picked one up. No one was left out. Weird, said Angelo, shaking his head. Despite the rocky start, the game went well. Christoph won, so as punishment, we sent him to the kitchen to fetch more drinks. Just after he disappeared into the other room, I heard a startling noise, a sort of quick choking gasp followed by a loud bang. I was just getting up to see if he was all right when the wine was brought to the table and I busied myself pouring everyone a fresh glass instead. I noticed that Kay's glass was still untouched from earlier. Hey, where's Kay? I asked. She went to the bathroom, said Dina. What, again? I guess. I leaned my head around the corner to see down the hallway. The bathroom door was closed. I supposed Marina was right. Shall we deal another hand? I asked. As soon as Christoph gets back, said Marina. I looked around. Christoph wasn't here. Where did he go? The kitchen, said Marina. The wine didn't bring itself in here, I pointed out. And all five of the new glasses have been moved. Marina gasped. Are you suggesting that someone is drinking Christoph's wine? We all laughed. I did wonder where Christoph was, though. And Kay for that matter. She'd been in the bathroom for a very long time. She couldn't have been, though. We'd played the game six-handed. She must have been here. Maybe she just wasn't drinking. Quick round of spades while we're waiting for those two to get back, asked Angelo, dealing out the cards. You've dealt five hands, Dina pointed out. Angelo slammed the cards down on the table. Okay, something is going on here. Everyone, hold hands. We all looked at him quizzically, but he was serious. 
we reached out and took each other's hands, forming a circle around the table. Now, in order, everyone say the name of the person to your left. My name was said. I looked left and said, Marina. Dina. Angelo. And I'm next to Scott, Angelo said, nodding at me. Wait, I objected. My name was already said. Let's go to the right, he said. Angelo's name was said. He followed it with Dina. Marina. Scott. And Angelo, I said. No, I was named first, he said. We looked at each other. I could feel his hand in mine. I could see him next to me. Look at the table, Angelo said. Why is there an extra glass of wine in between us? Let's take a photo, said Marina. Then we can see everyone at once. She put her phone on the table. We all backed up, put our arms around each other and smiled. The photo snapped. We gathered back around the table to look. It's you, me, you and you, said Marina, pointing. Four of us. No one else. Angelo studied it for a moment. It's not a selfie. Who took the picture? Christoph, said Marina. K, I said in the same moment. We all looked around the room. Neither one of them was here. He must still be in the kitchen, said Marina. I'll go see. I think we should all go together, said Angelo. Come on. We entered the kitchen as a group. It was empty. Do you smell gas? Asked Dina. My attention snapped to the stove. Two of the knobs for the burners were snapped off. I spotted them tucked under the cabinets nearby, as if someone had pushed them out of the way so as not to be noticed. There was a dent in the metal of the edge, too. Christoph must have dropped something on the stove, I said, heading over to see about turning off the gas. Nice of him to mention it. The knobs were broken too far down to turn. The gas was starting to give me a headache. I grabbed a hold of the stove to pull it out from the wall and shut off the line behind it, but it was surprisingly heavy. Did I leave something in here? I asked, opening the oven door. Christoph's body was crammed inside, the limbs bent and folded back on themselves in order to make it fit. A gory pool of blood filled the bottom of the oven, sloshing distressingly back and forth from my attempts to move the appliance. Most of it seemed to have come from his head, which had been violently crushed. His eyes bulged outward, staring at me. I screamed, of course. We all did. I turned away, to run, to find a weapon, possibly just not to see it anymore, and Dina died. Her throat was ripped open. It wasn't when I turned back, and then it was. Nothing did it. It just happened. Her hands flew up to clasp her ruined neck, but it was far too late to hold anything in. She collapsed to her knees. Her hair was held back as she died, keeping her upright and facing forward so we could all see the panic and despair. We were all frozen for a second. Angelo moved first, diving for her, but by the time he wrapped his arms around her she was slumping forward, already gone. He screamed, a raw caterwaul of rage and pain. After a moment, he focused it into words. Where is it? What did this? I grabbed a knife and put my back into a corner, looking around frantically. Marina was gone. I hoped that she had run. I didn't like that I didn't know. It's been here all night, Angelo hissed. Among us. Playing with us. Where's Kay? Where has she been all night? The bathroom, I thought, but I pictured Christoph's broken body in the oven and I knew that I did not want to open the door to check. Angelo continued his rant, his voice cracking in his fury. We can't see it. We can't know about it. You and I thought we were holding hands when it was between us. This is all a game to it. We don't know how to play. We can't even see the board. We've got to get out, Angelo, I said. It's not safe to be in here. Even without whatever's happening, the stove's still leaking gas. It is, he said, and his voice was suddenly eerily calm. Everywhere. And you know, that's an awfully good way to deal with something you can't see. What are you doing, Angelo? He fumbled in his pocket and pulled out a lighter. The back door's right there, Scott. Run, and close it behind you. Don't stop running when you're outside. Angelo. I'm sorry about your house, Scott. Run. 
I took a step toward him, but he pulled the lighter in toward his body. Go! If you don't go now, I'll do it while you're still in here. I probably ought to anyway. It's a better way to be sure. He flicked the lighter. It sparked. I fled for the door. Behind me, I could hear him flicking the wheel again. I made it outside before the kitchen exploded. I had my hand on the knob pulling the door shut, when a roar of heat and light slammed the door closed and flung me down the stairs onto my back lawn. The windows erupted in gouts of flame, pelting me with burning hot glass. I scrambled along the grass, desperate to get further away. My back was burning, and I rolled to put it out. The house is clearly a loss, but I called the fire department anyway. I didn't know what else to do. I don't know what I'll tell the police when they find the bodies inside. I don't even know how many they'll find. If Angelo got it, whatever it was, then there'll be at least four bodies. Him, Dina, Christoph and the other. Probably five, assuming it got Kay early on. Maybe six, if Marina didn't make it out. One of them must have, though. I'm not alone out here. My hand is held tightly as I watch the house burn. That is the end of this story. We want to thank user the third person for their horrific story of an unseen entity murdered the friends of our protagonist, Scott. And also, we would like to thank you, our avid viewers, for your unending support by tuning in on this story, and the stories before this. This could not be possible without your help. To continue your support, I kindly ask you to subscribe to this channel, share it to your friends, and turn on the notification bell so you'll receive all the updates from us when we upload new stories on our channel. And also, I kindly ask you to like this video, share this to your friends, and comment down below on what you think about this story. This is the Double Dutchman, and we'll see you on our next story.